Right? Yes? Uh, Violet and Alexa, anybody else? All right, any anniversaries this week? For some reason, we're getting a little, little bit of feedback here. I think that's better. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus dear every day of the year. Happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. And the best one you've ever had. All right, Brother Wade, would you come and receive our morning offering? We're going to just go ahead and worship the Lord together. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He.
monitor up here. Can, can you girls hear yourselves? No. I think we lost all of our monitor. Just bring it up a little bit. Praise the Lord. Say this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Oh, there. In, in the mains down there. Yeah. Okay. Say praise the Lord, Bobby Jim. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, we can hear ourselves now. Okay. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you know who Jesus is? Let me tell you who Jesus is. He's the rock of all ages. He's the upper and the over now. He's the heavenly father. He's the beginning and the end. Much more than just my friend. He's the son of man. i 
place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Hearing your love, hearing your love. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Hearing your love. Chains are broken, eyes are 
worship you, Lord, your power. Your power is in this place, Lord. Your sweet presence is here, Lord, to touch each life, to change us, oh God. Would you lift your hand to the Lord right now all over this building? Hallelujah, this fine congregation. Just reach out to the Lord. Hallelujah, let God have his way in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, there's freedom and liberty. There's power, there's deliverance in this place. Hallelujah, you just have to receive it. As many as received him, to them gave you power. Hallelujah, just reach out and receive from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we're so grateful to be in your presence today. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. God bless you, worship team. Amen. Somebody is sound asleep out there. So we'll do the baby dedication following the word. We're so happy today to have each one gathered out here, especially if you're visiting for the first time. Sister Jessica Cromwell's been here before, I believe. Have you been to service? Yes, yeah. Probably back when you were in Bible college. Amen. And she's an outgoing missionary to Poland, and she does have some uh, pictures at the back that are for sale to help. Uh, the proceeds will go towards the trip, her trip to Poland and the expenses. And, and uh, amen. If you feel to give a special offering, just mark it as Sister Jessica, and you can give that, and we'll put that towards that. Uh, uh, we're going to take her on as, uh, as a PIM, $50 a month. So help you out that way. And uh, how long are you going to be gone for? A year. A year. All right. Well, come and tell us all about it. Praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, Sunday school. We'll dismiss our kids to class. It popped into my mind. <laughs> talk about Poland for just a few minutes and um, so before before we actually started talking about getting ready to go to Poland I had very little idea what actually was in the country or anything about it um, I knew it was a country in Europe and that was about it so when you look at the first slide it's going to be um, a few things that a few things that people might associate with Poland. Um, so there's going to be uh, Polish pierogi and Polish sausages, um, Polish folk art and music and things like that. There's a very traditional style of dress that's very unique to that area and um, a lot of castles and historical monuments. But it's also associated with very dark times in history, such as World War II. Um, it began with the invasion and the bombing, I believe, of Warsaw. And there was a time of communism under the USSR. And more recently, of course, it's in the news because of its neighbor Ukraine and everything connected with the war, connected with the politics over there. So that's what people think of when they see Poland. And when I see Poland, on the next slide, you can see what I see. There's 38 point, or sorry, 37.8 million souls. <clears throat> Is it not working? Okay, well, 37.8 million. So when I think of Poland, that's what I see. There's other things there. There's the culture, and we try to study the history, and I'm bad at studying the language, but I'm working on it. But 
this is this is the why this is what this is all what it comes back to is 37.8 million um, okay um, we'll just kind of wait for them to catch up <coughs> um, so to compare in Canada there's 38.4 so there's only about half a million difference. And Poland itself is less than half of the province of Alberta. So all of those people are really condensed into several large cities. And <coughs> Warsaw itself is about 1.8 million. So that's pretty close to the size of Montreal. And that's our that's our um, capital city, and that's where we're working right now. In the country of Poland, we have very little representation, very little apostolic presence. We have, um, if it's not going to work back there, we can just... But we have um, just our church that we're working on in Warsaw currently. And... There's one other church that's an ALJC church. It's a sister organization that's working in Krakow. So there's two churches essentially in that entire area. Um, who are we re reaching for? There's more than 90% are ethnic Polish out of those 38 million. So that's a very high percentage. It's very traditional, very, um, they have a lot of religious tradition. They have a lot of uh, cultural association with their own church but then there's um, 71 universities in Warsaw alone and over 500 in Poland so that's bringing in a much younger a much um, more international demographic that's bringing in a lot of people that are already looking for to make new connections to meet new friends they don't have any any family or any connections in the area, in the country. So they're already looking to make new friends and meet new people as they explore the country. So we found that it works out really well that we don't know the country and they don't either. And we're just kind of learning together. And it's a good way to meet new people that are looking to make connections. And then we have a much newer demographic within the last few months. We have 35 and a half million Ukrainian refugees. And these people, these people are away from their friends and family and everything familiar with them, but on top of that, they're also escaping war. So they've left their homes and they're getting messages saying that their neighborhood was bombed or they're getting messages that, you know, the place where they work was bombed or they're waiting to hear news about a loved one that's left behind. Some of them are ethnic Ukrainian and may have moved there and some may have moved from other countries. But all are scared and all are unsure of the future. All have their worlds that are turned upside down in the last few months. And all are in need of love, in need of hope, in need of peace and all are in need of account, an encounter with the Prince of Peace. Amen. Many of these people deal with addiction, depression, many other forms of spiritual darkness. Many live by religious and cultural tradition and don't see the need for any further revelation. Um, I'm on slide five if you're back there. Um, so we have some different avenues that we're using to stay connected. And um, the pandemic has kind of helped us in a way because everyone has moved to online things, moved to being more connected on Zoom and things like that, which kind of helps us because then we can reach people that might not be in our direct city or neighborhood. But we have online English club to help people practice and learn new English. We have an online life group that discusses things, just everyday issues such as social media, depression, family dynamics, and it often leads to spiritual conversations and really lets us know about people's core values and beliefs. 
And then we have a worship night where we join the Polish and Russian and Latvian people, some other languages together, and we sing in all of these different languages in English, trying to make them feel like they're part of something a little bit bigger than themselves. So online is a really great way to stay connected, but we also have in-person game nights. And while nothing, nothing creates new friendships like, on, like in-person game nights, we have so many people that have become regular attendees and have moved on to friendships beyond just Friday night games. They've started inviting us to their house. They've started um, offering to make us meals. They've started, you know, looking for extra ways to connect with us or, you know, and they're looking to build those relationships just as much as we are. So out of these game nights, we have many conversations. There's a few pictures of them. Um, you'll notice there's a few faces that carry over from different nights there. Um, these are the ones that we're, we're working with every week to reach out to and some some just show up once or twice some just sit and they don't speak any english so they sit and they watch us and then they message later and say i had a great time <laughs> we wonder what what we did because we couldn't talk to them but but all of these people are ones that we're we're connecting with in different ways and they all love it but we have out of those, those Friday night game nights, we've had many conversations about God and spiritual beliefs, as well as Bible studies come out of those and people that have started attending their worship service on Sunday. So we have fun, but we keep our purpose in mind. And I want to stop here to talk about Andis for a minute. He was a young homeless man that we met. He's about 19 or 20, I think. And we invited him to a game night. So he arrived to the apartment Friday afternoon, several hours early, and he was so excited and he didn't want to miss it. And during those few hours that he was with us, before everyone else arrived, it was easy to see that he was in a really tough situation with not a lot of hope, not a lot, not a lot of a future that he could really see. He kept saying that he wasn't important, that he didn't matter, he wouldn't relax, he didn't even accept a glass of water. We invited him back the next day, and we had a short worship service, and we struggled to sing through some Russian songs. I don't speak Russian, but we worked it. We worked it. <laughs> it was his native tongue, and we wanted him to feel comfortable with it. But by the second song, he was singing worship to Jesus. We had a Bible study on Jesus' forgiveness, on what it means to repent, and on his love, saying that when you ask God for something, he's going to give it to you. And that day it rained, and that night it rained. Sometimes missions shows up in the weirdest form. We spent, I think, about six or eight hours playing Monopoly just to keep him out of the rain. I'm not a fan of Monopoly. <laughs> But you do what you do, right? And we, we wanted to keep him out of the rain as long as possible. So we invited him back on Sunday worship. And when he came, he was smiling and he was excited because he had a story to tell us. That night, it had been cold. And he remembered the Bible study that, and we talked about God. So he talked to God. He said he was really cold and could God give him a blanket? And just a few minutes later, there was someone that was throwing a blanket out to the dumpster. And Andis went and asked for it, and God gave him his blanket. He also, he wanted a coat. He only had a sweater. Um, he, but he had prayed already, asking forgiveness, and he said he wouldn't steal anymore. All of his clothes that he wore were stolen. So he went to a store owner the next day, and he went and asked if he could work for a little bit, and so he earned the money to get, to get a coat. And these are the things that we saw when he came back, he was just, he lit right up, and he was so excited to tell us about what God had done for him last night and that morning. And you could see, you could see in his face, you could just 
see the expression of hope and he was making plans and he was trying to figure out, you know, he was in the country illegally and so he's trying to figure out his best options and he was talking about different ways to get money. You could, you could see hope. We didn't get to see him again. We invited him back the next day and he never came back. So we don't know the end of the story, but I saw what happened to him in 48 hours of spending time with him. And all I can think is how many more Andeses are out there? How many more people are there that need to know about Jesus and what Jesus can do that need to see the hope? And so we have a vision. On the next slide, you can see a map of Poland. And right now, Warsaw is where we are at, and we have 10 other cities beyond Warsaw where we're looking. We're looking to reach into. These are the, the cities that we're projecting that we want to be in in the next few years. And we need training centers in these cities so that we can send people out into their homes, into their smaller towns, because that's the only way that Poland is really going to be reached, is to just send out laborers from these other training centers. And you'll notice there's no city in the lower area that we're targeting, and that's because Krakow is basically right at the, at the southern point there, and so they're reaching out into their other areas. And so there's already a, uh, an apostolic presence down there. Um, I will note as well that, so the Krakow Church, um, the worship center, they currently have they currently have a hotel, an empty hotel that they've renovated, and they have Ukrainian refugees that are living there right now. So they have, um, I believe, I believe somewhere around 40 rooms that are occupied by Ukrainian refugees right now, and they're having, um, they're having, <coughs> they have so many people that are coming that are hurting, and so they're having a lot of opportunities to reach out to them and to minister to them on a, on a very real, on the ground sort of basis, which is beautiful. Um, so to lay the groundwork for the vision, we're also working on going into the targeted cities in the next slide. There's um, prayer walks and things that we're doing and spirit-led evangelism. We're reaching out to the people in these other cities to lay a groundwork and to lay um, a foundation um, and get to know the areas, get familiar with them. And we also do prayer walks and street evangelism in Warsaw every opportunity that we get to set the atmosphere. Um, because you can see right now on the next slide what our church is. Nova Nijaya, Nijaya is New Hope in Warsaw, and this is the name of our church. Um, so you can see what our Sunday, our Sunday morning worship services look like, an evangelism training, and that's the team prayer meeting. These are all missionaries, I believe, except for one person in there. Um, we had Brother Patterson, our area coordinator, come and teach, teach a couple sessions. But right now, everything, Everything in the church is in that one little apartment living room. And we needed to expand beyond that. Um, but all of these things, all of, all of these activities, they all come back to one thing. It all comes back to that picture we saw at the beginning. It's on the next slide. It's all for one purpose, that they would know him. Everything we do, all the prayer walks, all the game nights, all the meeting people and spending time with them and getting coffee with people, it's all summed up right here, that they would know it. Um, someone a couple weeks ago asked me about my mission <laughs> and what it meant to me. And... In prayer that day, God gave me this scripture, and so I'm going to end the presentation with this, but um, Psalm 67, may God be merciful and bless us, may his face smile with favor on us. 
We need the favor of God. Amen. Um, may your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O oh God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and guide the people of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvests, and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us, and people all over the world will fear him. And every time I see that, I read the, the people and the nations, and I see Poland. And they don't know him yet. It's Pentecost Sunday, and so um, I didn't really actually plan on going to Acts, but I accidentally did, so we'll go with it. Um, but I want to read out of Acts chapter 1 for a minute. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. says, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles, whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse 4, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and I'm sure that... A lot of people can quote it in here. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues, cloven tongues, as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There's just a couple simple points that, that I've been thinking about the last couple days, and I want to share them. Um, the first is simply that they waited. Jesus told them that something was coming, but he didn't give them any details. And I sometimes wonder if I was there or if any one of us was there, when would we have grown tired of waiting? In today's world, there would have been questions of how much longer, can we rest, can we take shifts, can we go home and come back later, but they were unified and they waited, continuing in prayer and supplication in one accord. Human nature sometimes is to get a little impatient, to want a set date or a measurable timeline. Human nature is to ask why that day or why not now. Human nature is just to question. Months before my trip last fall, I went through a season of questioning God, questioning if he really meant for us to go, meant for me specifically to go, because I went at the same time as my parents, questioning when we should and for how long. I had prayed or vented my questions at God, and I had others praying with me, but one day I just went to him quietly and I said something along the lines of, God, I just need to know. And the answer I got back was simply, 
It's not for you to know when or for how long, just get ready. And that's what we need to do is just be ready for him. Be ready to work, be available, just, just do what we're supposed to do and he'll take care of the details. Our trip came more than two years after God had originally spoken to my dad. And we originally planned for a year, for a year earlier, and then the pandemic happened. And we thought, oh, the pandemic messed up our timing for our trip. Like somehow God hadn't factored that in when he said to go. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was over there that I realized God had individually arranged for three other aimers to go for their short-term trip. And it was beginning within a few days of ours. He had arranged for our trainer, who was from Latvia, to be in Poland at the same time. And there was another aimer that had just arrived a few month, or a few weeks before we did. And all this to say that God coordinated our team's timing to all arrive in Poland within a short time and be there to train and to learn to work together. We had no idea that God was doing this all until we got there and realized that the timing was absolutely perfect. That's what happens when we wait on him and his timing. Amen. We can't get so busy waiting, though, that we miss his timing. I was listening to some teaching the other day that really struck me, and it said, the teacher said, don't idolize the ideal. So we can look at our circumstances and say, God could move better if, or I could do more for God if. God doesn't need the perfect situation. He works in the impossible, he works in the difficult, he works in any situation. He just needs us to be willing. The ideal time is never going to come. We can sit, live our entire lives just waiting for the right opportunity. There's always going to be things that are pulling our attention. There's financial stresses, health situations, maybe a sick family member or any, any, other, any other situation. Maybe we're saying that we could be more effective if God, for God if we had more money. That would take all the worries, all the stresses away. We could go and just live overseas and never have to come home. I've had to stop and really think about this one because I'm so guilty. I don't know how many times I've said in the past that all I need is a week of peace and quiet and I can get so much done. <laughs> or all I need is this much money and then I could just be worry-free and go overseas and not have to think about it. But God doesn't need us to be not busy or to not have stresses or to have millions in the bank. He just needs us to be willing to go right. to do. Right. Willing to take a minute out of our busy day to talk to someone. Every time Jesus was ministering, he was on his way somewhere else and he stopped. We need to be willing to do what he has for us for the kingdom. Willing to go out of our way for him and willing to put his kingdom first. He never said that we wouldn't have things to do when we're working for him. He didn't say that there wouldn't be worries. He specifically addressed those when he said, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. Amen. There will always be a reason why it's not the ideal circumstance. If there's nothing else, then it's because we're imperfect people. We are flawed. And the comforting thing though I found is that he made us that way. More than anything else, he's aware of this. He made us imperfect and he loves us that way. We are made whole in him. And often I've read that as we're made perfect in him and so perfect means no flaws, just can do everything to 110%. But no, we're made whole and complete in him. Yes. That doesn't mean that we're expected to never make a mistake. Right. It's easy to put the extra pressure on ourselves of not having any, not only not sinning, but not having any weaknesses or vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. Not wanting to have anything that we're not good at. We're human and we're imperfect. And he chose us anyway. He chooses to love us and to call us to reach other imperfect people. So we wouldn't be very relatable to anyone if we're reaching to people that are flawed when we're not. 
And the last point that I want to make is that he gave us power for a purpose. Amen. He called us to reach people and he gave us the Holy Ghost so that we would be equipped to do it. We read it in Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and to all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. One of the aimers over there was talking to a Ukrainian and um, one of the refugees that's staying in the hotel. And as they were talking, he said, before I met you, I thought that all Christians were atheists because I thought that there's no way they actually believe in a God when they go on sinning, they go on living in fear, they go on living as though there is no God that's in control. And it really struck her that they of another, of another belief, another faith entirely, they commit themselves entirely. They commit everything that they do to their religion. They, I mean, we'll see people get down and pray in airports and in grocery stores or anything else when they have to pray, but they see Christians and they don't think that we're changed or we're affected by the God that we serve. And it struck her so much. And even as she was telling me about it, I just, I want the Holy Ghost to shine through so much that they can't doubt that I serve a God. Amen. I want the Holy Ghost to be a witness through me. We didn't get the Holy Ghost just to keep it to ourselves right. or to mark ourselves as saved, but we gave it. He gave it to us to share with others. Amen. We're fully prepared for the task if we will use it and if we will actually do it. It's up to us to use it for the intended purpose and use it to be a witness. He's so good. Amen. He's so good. I just want to be a witness for him. I want to be a witness in Poland. And I know that there's so many Polish people that need to, that need to know. I want to thank you for the opportunity to come. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Jessica. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. And just to think of the population of all of Canada in a country the size of the province of Alberta. Wow. And all those people that are just so in need of what you and I have in Jesus, the peace, the purpose, the, the promise of eternity, amen. And all those Ukrainian uh, folks that are in there, did you say three to five million? Three and a half million. Three and a half million, 3.5. 3.5 million, you can imagine bringing them in. Oh, I don't know where the house, but it must be just quite a thing to be able to, you know, all of a sudden you've got that um, um, excess population and uh, you kind of um, feed them and clothe them. What a task to do, but thank God that Poland has opened up their doors and thank God that uh, the Cromwells are going to be ministering there. Brother, Sister Cromwell, her parents were there for how many months? Three. For three months. And I think it's probably in their heart to someday, possibly, <laughs> we're gonna find out. But uh, we know that their burden is certainly there and we're gonna be in prayer for them. And uh, as you probably have noticed, uh, we've got a lot of pictures. Are the prices on the pictures? Uh, there's a list in the front. A list in the front, okay. And if you'd like to uh, pick up a picture and, and support uh, this worthy cause, that would be awesome. And I'm just, uh, we're gonna probably be done a little bit early, so you'll have some time to stop at Sister Jessica's table, ask her questions, and just look at those pictures and uh, other things that she may have out, out there. The, at the back of the church. And we're going to have a baby dedication. I'm just wondering if um, if we've got everybody. Pardon me? He's on his way. He's on his way, all right. So I'm just gonna ramble up here while we're. <laughs> uh, 
actually we've got a really sweet uh, slideshow. Why don't we just uh, see if that'll play? We've had a few problems with our system, which normally we don't have any problems, do we, Brother Allen? Normally it runs really smooth. So you had to reboot everything, did you? Yeah, sometimes that's what we need is just to go to reboot ourselves, right? <laughs> and that's why we come to church is to get a reboot. So here he is. And he is quite a sweet little baby. Weighed eight pounds, 12 ounces. joining us. We're glad that you are here.
I'm glad that Jesus loves each one of us, aren't you? So I see all of our kids have come back to join us, so um, we'll have the lights back on, and uh, I'd like Bobby Joe and Dale and uh, baby Leo. Oh, there they are. Mason, if he, Mason would like to come up to the platform and join them, he can. No, he's going to stay back with his Sunday school teacher. Okay, I have a little song I'm going to sing. So you guys can stand right there, and I'll be right with you. We dedicate baby Leo to you, Lord. We dedicate baby Leo to you, Lord. Use him for your service, for a holy purpose. We dedicate baby Leo to you, Lord. Use him for your service. For a holy purpose, we dedicate baby Leo to you, Lord. Everybody said amen. How you doing, little guy? Got a smile for me? <laughs> he usually does. All right, we'll bring up those scriptures if you would. Uh, the Bible tells us, Then were brought unto Jesus little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Allow the little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. Well, we have just the perfect amount of time to do this baby dedication. And uh, there we go. We're starting to, he had had a little sleep during the service, so he's still somewhat in a daze. <laughs> but there's a smile. He's usually, uh, smiles are quite inexpensive with this guy. He likes to smile. And he's just trying to figure out what's going on right now. Um, children, the Bible says, are the heritage of the Lord. They are the blessing of the Lord. And every child really is a miracle. And they're a gift from God to us. And they're a lot of work too. They're a lot of work. They have to be fed and changed and consoled and rocked and wiggled and played with and read to. And sometimes uh, you may read 50 books in a day. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's so well worth it because the time that is invested in these little ones is helping to mold and helping to shape them. And I'm thankful for the opportunity for a child to grow up to know that Jesus loves them, to know the gospel, and to have that peace, and to have that joy. <laughs> and a million dollars smile right there. Yes, yeah, so... Um, Children are a great blessing. They're also a great responsibility. And I know that my mom said that when she had us children that God began to convict her that she needed to make room in, in her life for the Lord. She loved the Lord, always wanted to serve the Lord, but didn't fully understand, uh, uh, as she does now, a lot of the things about the Bible, but always desired to know the Lord and to serve the Lord. And uh, God got a hold of my heart at 10 years of age. And it was shortly after that that my mom gave her heart to the Lord and received the gift of the Holy Ghost and was baptized in Jesus' wonderful name. And, and so just like dominoes in our family. And, and, and so God can use a child. God used me and God can use baby Leo and God can use baby Mason to help us all to get closer to God. And I believe that like the scriptures as a little child shall lead them that children can certainly lead us into a closer relationship with the Lord. And that is our prayer today. And each couple that stands up here with the baby to be dedicated to the Lord uh, is something that is very special in God's eyes. As you read in the scriptures today that I shared with you, 
Jesus loved the children and he still loves the children. And I believe every child that does not reach the age of understanding and goes into eternity goes into the presence of the Lord, regardless of their background or situation, because they haven't had an opportunity to choose for or against serving the Lord. Uh, so a little baby, we don't baptize them. We don't christen them because the scriptures do not command us to do that. But there is plenty of scriptures in the Bible to show that we are to dedicate them to the Lord's. Hannah brought Samuel to the Lord and dedicated him to the Lord. And that's what's going to happen today with this little guy. We're going to pray. But really, even more than a baby dedication, it's a parent dedication. Because babies don't understand enough. To, but we dedicate them and believing that someday he's going to follow in our footsteps and serve the Lord. So we're going to pray together. And if you would just uh, reach your hand in the direction of this precious family. And we're going to pray. Hey, bud. Come to the pastor. Oh, we'll hold you upright because you can hold your head up pretty good there now. Want to say hello to everybody? Want to say hello? Oh, it's not an ice cream cone. It's not. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for Dale and Bobby Joe and Mason and baby Leo. I thank you, oh Lord, that this family has a desire to honor you, glorify you, and serve you. And we pray, Lord Jesus, just as you blessed the little children 2,000 years ago, that you will lay your hand upon this child, his brother, his mom, and his dad, and that, Lord, you will shape them and mold them. And we pray, oh God, that they will serve you, Lord, and lead him into the kingdom of heaven someday, Lord, as a family, that they would, they would experience the blessing, Lord, of salvation. We thank you, God. This is a miracle, Lord. Uh, and we're grateful, oh God, that you have brought him into this world, but more importantly, that you brought him into our church. He's a member of our church family, and we want to be there, Lord, to encourage, never to criticize, but to encourage and to come alongside and help, Lord, these precious little ones. So we pray your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. 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 I think Sister Shelley may want to get a picture, too, so if you want to come right up. Hopefully someday he'll want to hold a mic. And uh, so I'll turn it back to you. Maybe my wife can come up. And, uh, I'm used to them a little bit older now because my grandson's 17 months old. Did you want to come up, Sister Down, and we'll get a picture? Or we can do it later. All right. Turn it around. Look at Sister Shelley. All right, we'll get those pictures afterwards. Let's pray. Amen. Yes. That's all right. all right. Thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah, let's pray. Father, thank you for this service and for your presence. And continue to be close to each one of us throughout this day, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want.